I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my Animal Education Series. Today I'm here with Robin at the Powder Valley Nature Center. Hello. Hi, how are you? So today we're talking about the sturgeon. So what are some cool things about the sturgeon? Well, we have two sturgeon, two lake sturgeon in the in the aquarium behind me. You'll notice them coming by when you see the white under underbelly, and they have actually they don't have scales. They have smooth skin, so I would think kind of maybe more like a dolphin. Skin. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're an endangered Missouri uh, animal, and they live in they're mostly found in Missouri and Mississippi rivers. Cold, cold water. They, they're cold water fish. Um, they're endangered mainly uh, due to habitat destruction. Um, dam building and over harvesting. So, um, so the Missouri Department of Conservation is working to uh, build those numbers back up. They actually raise them in the hatchery and that's where we got the two we have. Uh, they raise them in the hatchery and um, there are about 300,000 uh, here in Missouri right now, but wow. they're not, they have been released into the, the rivers. So. They're obviously running an education facility, so these are used for education about the sturgeon. Education? Yes, yes, it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, we have a nice sign uh, to let's pe let people know about the sturgeon. Uh, they were a valuable animal in history uh, for both food and their eggs were collected. Like we would think of um, an, uh, fish that the eggs are collected for caviar. They were that kind of fish. So they're uh, they were a valuable part of our history. But I think uh, the message is that people. Um, like them too much, so they disappeared, and now conservation efforts are bringing them back. So, what would these fish eat in the wild? Well, in the wild, they're bottom feeders or scavengers. Uh, so, you would they would just lay on the bottom, and of course, they're swimming around right now. It's not feeding time, but here we have a way to get the food to the bottom. We take a a, plex, or a, a, a tube, and we drop pieces of worms and. Uh, little minnows in and they're chopped up and we just drop them through that tube and run water through it and it all comes about at the bottom and they just come scurrying over. They've been trained to know it to come to the tube at feeding time. So they're kind of trained. They, yeah. they know exactly when it's going to happen. They are. Mm -hmm. they, they know to go to that tube and they know to always eat on this side. That's what we feed them in the same place all the time. So how big do these fish get? Uh, they can get up to eight feet long. Wow. So there's a really big like fish. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. How much would, would they weigh at that size? Um, I think it's about 300 pounds. Wow. That they can get up to. Yeah. It's pretty crazy for yeah. a fish. Yeah. yeah the I don't see them in here. They're, they're not very big. No, they're uh, about uh, three years old, and I bet they're maybe two feet long now. I'm assuming both so, over there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can see them. Yeah. Kind of a prehistoric looking fish, aren't they? You can see the ridges on their backs. Yeah, that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, yeah. And they have a special mouth. It's, it looks to me like a vacuum cleaner. They'll still scoot along the bottom and they have that raised nose, so their mouth sucks the food up like a vacuum cleaner. But you see them, they'll spit the rocks back out, so they're, they're sucking up, and they suck up the worms and the fish, and then spit the rocks back out. It seems like some marine fish do the kind of the same thing with the sand. So, now let's talk about the tank here. Like, how big is this tank? This is a 3,000 gallon tank, and it's a representative of whole water uh, rivers in Missouri. Uh, every fish in here is, is something you commonly see in the Missouri rivers. And what kind of fish are you in here? Well, we have a couple of catfish. We have uh, carp, and we have three gar, which you see them just kind of hang to the back more. And we have a uh, bluegill right here. here. Yeah, and there's a soft shell turtle too. That's a good view of the sturgeon. Yeah, um, soft shell turtle right now. She might be. Sometimes she burrows under. Oh, here she's down here. So she have to wait till she swims up. The soft shell turtle we have. And we've, this has been a trial and error. We've had to work with fish that get along and don't get along, and then when the ones that don't get along, we have to take them out and then replace them with something else. Sometimes the fish will just pick each up at each other, and sometimes they're really aggressive. So um, the, the sturgeon do good in there, but they're uh, very docile fish, so sometimes they have trouble with the more, well, you see that enormous catfish that um, he tries to take their food a lot of times, so that's been an issue. But but they're plenty healthy, so we figure they're getting enough to eat. So why is it good to have a big, diverse uh, environment like this with multiple different fish instead of just a uh, tank of sturgeon? Um, I just think myself it's a better model of what's really out in nature. You never see animals um, on their own. Ecosystems are full of 
a lot of different species, mm -hmm. plants and animals. So I just think it's a, a good example of what people would see in the rivers. And I've seen like, uh, other like, multi-species enclosures that's more enriching for the animal. Because if it's just them and their one species, they're only having those interactions with them. But you said that the catfish that tries to take their food, that's enrichment from them because like, they're interacting with something else. Well, that's a good so point. it kind of keeps them from being like, bored. Right, that's a good point. That, that is more natural, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, and some animals, not necessarily in this tank, but some animals actually help each other, don't they? Like, yes. You might have animals that come and pick the bugs off of other animals or... Like in Africa, was, I can't remember the name of the bird right now, but there's this little bird that goes into the mouth, crocodile's mouth, and mouth, picks up little bugs and everything. <laughs> okay. Um, so it could be like an environment like that. Uh, a relationship like that. Right. You never know. That's true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for telling us about the tank and, and the surgeon. Yeah, we're glad to have you today. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week.